What is up, guys? It is Ryan with DP Marketing Services, author of the book. Uh, where is it? Here we go. The book on digital marketing for plumbing and HVC contractors. Also, the host of Blue Collar CEO. It's good to see you. Uh, thanks for stopping by. So, you are watching this video today because you're probably curious about one thing. That's how to grow your plumbing business, how to grow your HVAC business, how to grow your electrical business. Look, if you have a home service business at all, you're probably looking for how to grow. And maybe you're starting off from nothing, um, like you're you're going out on your own for the first time, good for you. Uh, or maybe you're, you've are you been at it for a while and you're ready to take it up a notch. Also, good for you. Both are good so spots, uh, but there's there's some stuff to do. Uh, so let's, let's go through a couple things that you want to keep in mind. Um, I'm gonna try to keep this high level, but, um, know this at first, if you're serious about growing your plumbing business, chances are it's going to require you, uh, developing and investing in yourself in your own skills and your own capabilities so that you're better able to navigate this process. You've gotten very good at your, what you do. If it's turning your wrench with plumbing or installing mini splits, whatever it is that you have like developed your trade and your craft in, you're probably very, very good. But learning how to grow a business is an entirely new set of skills that you're gonna have to continue to invest in yourself. And not just now, but for forever, you will always be the cap of your company's success. So uh, without further ado, let's get into this. Uh, one of the first things you can do right now is if you're wanting to grow, grow your business, start planning it out. Very, 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 very few businesses thrive accidentally. Most of them know exactly the customers they're trying to get. They know exactly how much money they need to make. They know exactly how their costs are going. They know exactly the goals that they need to hit. There's there's not a lot of accidents uh, that are successful. So uh, make sure that you're actually just focused on uh, knowing what you need to do. If you are starting off, I would highly recommend shadowing someone, uh, following people in other trades. There's a lot of good feedback in different Facebook groups. But look for people who are where you want to be and shadow them, learn from them, like suck up their knowledge. If you're going to someone who you worked for before, you they will always be the cap, right? Like you will never be able to exceed those people. So look for people that you can like shadow and suck up uh, information that are smarter than you are. I personally have, have a belief that um, you should always want to be the dumbest person in the room. Uh, because that means you're surrounding yourself with really smart people. So look for people who are smart, who have done it. Uh, follow those people. Look for mentors. Uh, there's a ton of great podcasts available on how to build a home service business. I will give a shameless plug, plug for uh, Blue Collar CEO. Uh, we try to give tons of helpful advice from all kinds of people in all sorts of industries to help you grow your business and become more profitable. Um, there's books out there like, heck, even this book. Um, my friend Dan wrote this book. If you're curious about branding, um, sure, that was a plug that I didn't expect. Um, so point being, uh, invest in yourself, get a mentor, go to classes, uh, listen to podcasts, talk to people who are smarter, um, get books, read, uh, and really to help up your game. It will be, it will be very helpful for you. The other thing is make sure financially that you're sound. You need to know your numbers. This is one of the things a lot of people struggle with. Um, because they're really good at being busy, but they're not always good at understanding how the cash goes through the business. So there's an idea called cash flows. I'm not going to go into this on, on this video. One, because the idea of managing cash flows takes a lot of time to master. Uh, so I don't even want to like pretend like to summarize it in an hour. <laughs> uh, but basically, just make sure that you need to know how how your business makes money you need to know your uh your to, your rate per uh, tool hour you need to know how much it actually costs you to start a van and get off the lot you need to know all those things if you're starting off with just you i would highly recommend establishing your pricing with a flat rate pricing model and do it as though you have five or six employees so go ahead and build that overhead into your costs now now your first response is going to be but I'll be making too much money and I can't possibly charge my customers that much. And look, uh, you're wrong. I'm not going to tell you why you're wrong in this. Just know if you want to grow your business, get in that margin now because it's a whole lot easier to grow when your business has cash coming in the door. So you can invest in uniforms. You can invest in people. You can invest in training. You can invest in all those things uh, versus like trying to scratch it all together. Uh, I would also really, really recommend focusing on de developing your company culture. Understand your values. How do you treat each other? How do you treat your customer? Like, how do you make decisions as a business? Um, even if it's just you, I don't care if you're if you got zero dollars in revenue right now, if you got a million dollars in revenue right now, 
developing culture is going to be one of those things that is going to have massive dividends down the road. I've done videos on culture before, so I don't I don't want to get too far down this particular rabbit hole. I will say one of the things that I like to think about culture is um, what well, I like steak, right? I like going to nice steakhouses, paying good money for a good cut of meat. I love it. And it doesn't matter how good the cut of meat, how good the steak and how good the experience is. If by the, when the meat comes out from the kitchen, if the plate is dirty and got crap on it from someone else, it instantly devalues that steak, right? Instantly that steak is trash. So it doesn't matter how you're trained or how cool you are, or what software platform you use or how cool your uniforms are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If your company culture is toxic, it's going to ruin everything else. Um, there's a guy named Peter Drucker who said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So invest in culture early, understand the things that are important and what you want to craft and hire for those, develop those things over time. And uh, as you grow, make that more and more of a focus uh, as you become higher up in the organization. Um, another thing you want to do is make sure that you always focus on the things that matter. Don't focus on being busy, like do the very basic things exceptionally well. Um, you want to make sure that ideally you can get your business to run without you in it. Until you get to that day, all you have is a job. So if you can get things in the processes, you can train the processes. Everyone follows the process. There are no exceptions. 80% of the time you guys do a job, you know exactly how it's going to happen. Uh, you, you need to know if those are in place. There's going to be 20% of the time where it's like, eh, you might not be able to know or it's impossible to account for everything. And that's totally fine. In which case, your goal should be to hire people smart enough uh, that they can do the 20% on their own just based on their experience. But for 80% of the things that you do that you know you're always going to answer the phone, you're always going to run the calls, it's always going to be like this, the 80% of the stuff, you should have process down and make sure that you know how to do those over and over and over and over and over. Train them, drill them, train them, drill them. Make sure your team knows. Uh, and you want to make sure that you know how to market your business. Um, I see a lot of guys struggle. They put a lot of eggs in one basket. Uh, they either don't know how to manage uh, either marketing expense or marketing return. And so there's a lot of confusion on where things come from and how do you attribute things. Um, so be careful. Don't get stuck in the um, in the lead gen game where like all you're doing is just trying to get a phone call. You will probably always struggle to gain efficiencies if all you're doing is like the bottom of the barrel people. Try to be more sophisticated. Try to build up from the bottom of the funnel. We've talked about the funnel on the marketing side before, and it also is, not to plug this book again, it's also mentioned a lot here. So if you have questions about the, the concept of marketing funnel, how to diversify your approach, I would recommend it. Um, and all, the goal over time is to lower your cost per lead acquired. So starting off, if you are brand new, your cost per lead is going to be pretty damn high. As you grow, as you get more of a reputation, as these other things coming on, come online, you'll start noticing your cost per lead would fall. Um, and that should be true pretty consistently. Uh, but you're you're not going to be able to get magical cost per lead numbers um, quickly. Just know you have to work to get to those. And that's going to take years. That's not going to be weeks. Um, and then last thing I would say, remember why you're doing this. Keep that in front of you. If you want to grow your plumbing, your HVC, your home service business, it's going to take more than just uh, doing a few things for the right reasons for a short period of time. You're gonna need to get motivated to get your butt out of bed, to go in on a Saturday if you have to, to take care of your team. You're gonna need to remember your why. Maybe your why is that you've grown up in poverty, you've never been able to have success, and for the first time in your life, you feel like you can provide for your family and your team's families in a way that you never had. Awesome. If that gets you out of the bed in the morning, focus on that, remind yourself of that why. If it's, hey, you want to be able to spend your time with family at the lake because you don't really want to be running calls every day, you'd rather be at the lake, awesome. Remember your why. Whatever your why is, there is no wrong answer. Just remember your why of why you started this in the first place. Keep that front and center. It makes everything else that you'll do so much easier. So that's, that's the thing. I would say that it's easy, that there's ways to hack it, that it's rocket science. It's not. It's just there's a lot of discipline and a lot of guys suck at the discipline. There's a lot of detail. A lot of guys suck at the detail. Just do the things that matter consistently and you will be, uh, you'll be surprised at the impact it has. I would love to hear from you. Is there anything, I try to keep this pretty concise, is there anything that you would add to this list that I missed? Leave a comment below. As always, guys, follow us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, check out our podcast, and uh, yeah, we will see you next time.